Environmental analysis softwares are often expensive and difficult to customize for any complex design project. Luckily, the Ladybug plugin for Grasshopper is free and can integrate seamlessly into your design project. Ladybug allows you to import and analyze standard weather data in Grasshopper and draw diagrams like sun path diagrams and radiation diagrams that are completely customizable. We can run radiation and sunlight analysis live on geometry in Rhino and Grasshopper and use this information to inform our designs or even directly affect our projects. Unfortunately, Ladybug isn't as seamless as other Grasshopper plugins and can be a little bit tricky to install, so let's spend a few moments talking through the installation process. First, you just need to navigate to foodforrhino.com and search for Ladybug, hit return, and then select the Ladybug Tools options. If you scroll down to the download section, you'll notice that there are some older legacy versions of Ladybug, so make sure you download the one at the very top of the page. Once you've downloaded the file, unzip the folder and open it. The folder contains a few files, including installation instructions and examples. We want to just open the installer grasshopper file, so just double click on that and open it up. So this is an installer within Grasshopper, and we just want to run these two toggles to firstly install Python, and then secondly install the Ladybug Toolkit. So I'm going to double click on this first toggle and hit run, and it'll say that it's installed everything correctly here. And then I'm going to hit um, true on this second toggle here to install the Ladybug Toolkit. Once the installation is run, close Rhino and navigate to the C drive on your computer. Then you just want to go to Users. Select the current user that you're logged in as, and go down to the folder that's just installed called Ladybug Tools. And then inside of this, make sure Rhino's closed of course, you want to run this set Python path. And it'll create this little command line, and basically it's going to set up a path link between um, Rhino and Ladybug. Hit return, and then you can reopen Rhino again. So once you've got Rhino reopened and you've also opened Grasshopper, you'll notice that a few different packages have installed. So Ladybug doesn't just come with, you know, the Ladybug package. We can see it installed successfully up here though. It also comes with plugins called Honeybee um, and then some kind of like different kind of spin-off plugins um, to give you a lot of different components for environmental analysis. So let's click on the Ladybug plugin and I'm just going to go file and create a new document in Grasshopper. So let's try and drop something on the canvas and see if it works. So I'm just going to go with this top left component and drop it on the canvas. And if you don't get any red errors, this means that your installation has worked correctly. If you're getting a red error on one of these components, what you want to do is manually link Rhino um, and Ladybug together. So the way to do this is you have to type in the command line, edit Python script, and bring up the Python script editor, then go to tools, and options. And inside of tools and options, you can kind of specify a few paths that will link up Ladybug and Grasshopper. So you see here, I've got a path that navigates to C, users, user, Ladybug tools, Python, lib, site packages. And basically, you need to go and add a search path and find that exact path, that site packages folder. It'll be the same on your computer and link it up manually. Then restart Rhino and you won't get that error message. One last thing we need to install is a radiance package. If we drop this component up here, which is the LB Ladybug Cumulative Sky Matrix onto the canvas, you'll see straight away that we're going to get thrown an error. Let's have a look at this error. It's telling us that we don't have the Radiance installation on this machine, which is like a special package that Ladybug uses to do some of its Radiance analysis. We've got a link here where we can actually download it. So if you click on this, that'll copy that message bubble and then we can paste it into an internet browser. So let's go back to our browser and I'm going to paste this in and we are going to go to um, this HTTP straight there and there's a compatibility matrix which is basically the software that we need to download. I'm going to download this one because I'm using Ladybug 1.1.0 so I'm just going to hit on that one and then you just want to scroll down to the bottom and find the one that relates to you. Mine's the windows.exe file there. And once that's downloaded, you want to navigate it to the download location, double click on that, and just install that Radiance package on your PC. Um, I recommend selecting Do Not Add Radiance to the System Path, but if you do select this option, just note that on the next um, page, you have to install Radiance on your C drive, so don't choose a different location. 
I'll hit next and I'll hit install. And now if you navigate to Rhino, close and reopen, and then reopen Grasshopper, we can go back to our Ladybug plugin and find that component and just test that that's worked. And we're no longer throwing that error. So now we've installed all the tools we need to use Ladybug inside of Grasshopper. Let's create a Ladybug simulation measuring the daylight sun hours for an urban massing model. This simulation will give us information around the number of hours of direct sunlight received by a massing volume in an urban context over a specified time period. To begin, I have a Grasshopper template file containing an urban massing model from the city of Melbourne in Australia, as well as a panel containing a link to an EPW weather file that contains weather information about the city. You can download this file from thedifferentdesign.com. Once you've got this template file open, just make sure that your Rhino units are set to millimetres because that'll affect how we do our weather simulations. If you jump into perspective and zoom out, you'll see this urban context model uh, being referenced into Rhino through the preview component. The first thing we want to do with Ladybug is we want to turn this weather URL file into a usable weather file. So I'm going to jump straight into it and go to the LB download weather component and drop that onto the canvas with Ladybug and plug that URL into the weather URL input. And what it'll do is it'll actually save that EPW file for us into a folder that Ladybug kind of specifies, which is quite helpful. So the next thing we want to do is actually turn this EPW file into like a usable location inside of Ladybug. So let's set, select this LB import location file and drop that in the canvas. Input the EPW file and then we'll get a nice location telling us about Melbourne, its latitude and longitude and a few other things that are going to be useful for Ladybug. Now for us to do our direct sun hours calculation, we want to first set up a sun path diagram using Ladybug. So we can do this by coming up here to the LB sun path diagram, clicking on it once and dropping it onto the canvas. It's a pretty scary looking component, but if we click once on this bubble, we'll notice that um, the only thing that we need to just get it working is some location data. And we've got location data coming out of our import location component. So I'm going to drag that location input into this location here, and straight away we get a nice sun path diagram appearing in our Rhino viewport. So you might have seen a diagram like this previously. Um, basically sun path diagrams typically just show where a sun is going to be positioned at any point of time during the year. And we can kind of specify like a very specific time period using Ladybug. So if I went into the Analyze Data um, drop down menu and selected the LB Calculate HOY, it's going to calculate an hour of the year for us based on something we input. So what we could do is create some grasshopper panels that specify the month, day and hour that we want to look at. So I'm going to look at month 12, which is December, and in Australia, in Melbourne, that is the middle of summer, and we might go for day 21. I think that's summer solstice. It's pretty close to the longest day of the year, and then for an hour, let's just go midday. And if we go and plug this HOY into the HOYS input in SunPath, we get a point that appears to show us where the sun would be at this particular you know, time period. So if I made that 9 a.m., suddenly we're lower in you know, the sky in the east. And if we made this you know, September, suddenly we're even lower and backwards in the sky again. Um, so then we can specify a very specific time period. We want to specify a actual longer period than that. So what we want to do is have an analysis, analysis period rather than a specific moment. So if we go to the Analyze Data tab again and select the Analysis Period component and drop that onto the canvas, we can actually specify a period within um, our Ladybug simulation rather than one specific day. So the period that I want to specify, it's going to be on the 12th, so the month the 12th. So I'm going to make the start month 12, and then the end month also 12. 
And I'm just going to do it on the day of the 21st. So the start day and end day are also going to be the 21st. I'm not going to do a specific hour. We're just going to look at this specific day of summer solstice in Melbourne in Australia. And I'm going to plug this HOYS into HOYS sun path. And you'll see now we get a collection of points generated in our sun path diagram that specify kind of every hour that's occurring in this analysis. So now that we've set up this sun path diagram, we can get straight into analyzing some geometry using Ladybug. I'm going to go to the Analyze Geometry tab, and we're going to look at this direct sun hours component, which will give us our sun analysis um, and basically tell us the number of hours a specific you know, massing or geometry is exposed to daylight. The only thing we need from the sun path is the vectors. So we can take those vectors and plug them into our direct sun hours, um, just like that. And then we need a few other things. So if you click on your little bubble, it says you need some geometry to analyze. We need a grid size and we need to specify that we're running the simulation. So let's go and just create a geometry container like this. And I might just draw a box on um, in Rhino just there like that. That can be like a small mass that we're proposing in the middle of the city. And I'll go set one geometry with that and then we can reference that geometry into here. So we could also reference some context in, um, and that context could come from, you know, this context up here. So from this geometry file, we could reference that guy into there. Then we also need to reference a grid size that it was asking for. Because we're working in millimeters, we want to have a pretty large grid size. So I'm going to go for a value of three meters, which is 3000 millimeters, and plug that into there. And then for the offset distance, what that'll do is, um, Ladybug's going to basically spit out a geometry, a colored geometry showing our analysis, and we want to offset it from this initial geometry slightly so it's just easy for us to view. So I might do an offset distance of 20. And then once we're happy that, with that, we can create a Boolean toggle and run the simulation. So I'll plug that into run, hit true. And then straight away, we get a da daylight analysis showing us the direct sun hours on this geometry that we've created in Rhino. So you can see at the top, it's getting upwards of 15 hours per day. And towards the bottom, it's getting no sunlight at all. And obviously, in the northern part of the sun, you're getting like a lot more red, whereas in the south, you're getting a lot more blue. And this is live. So if I go and move this over here, you'll see like this facade here being further away from these buildings has less blue on it now. And then if we move it back, much closer it gets a lot of blue on the analysis you could also create like a base um, in Rhino um, and reference both of these geometries in set multiple geometries and then we can get an analysis um, of the actual surroundings of the site we're working on as well which gives us a lot of control over uh, this kind of tool as a um, bit of a massing model tool that we can update live one thing I don't like about this tool right now is that we have to keep referencing our geometry back into this geometry component. And there's actually a much more convenient way for us to analyze the geometry in Rhino with a component called the geometry pipeline component. So I'm going to type in geometry pipeline, which is this one here. Um, and the geometry pipeline component actually references geometry from Rhino without us having to click any buttons inside of Grasshopper. So I might create a new layer and I'll call it massing. Um, I'm going to make my current layer and I'm just going to delete these two pieces of geometry here. I'm going to name our geometry pipeline layer input as massing as well. And what it will now do is basically take any geometry that we model on the massing um, layer and output it into Grasshopper Live without us having to do any references. So I'll create a panel so we can see. Um, and I'm going to just specify a type. So I'm going to make this a brep. So I'm going to do surfaces and poly surfaces that um, are going to be modeled on this massing layer. Now, if I just create a box and model that there, you'll see straight away it references that brep in. And if I create a copy of this box, it references that in too. So we could now go and model anything in Rhino and it will update live and if we change that geometry it will also um, update for us. So this geometry pipeline could actually be taking over what the geometry input for this analysis is. So now if I draw up the plane in Rhino like this, I don't have to reference anything in to get this analysis. And then if I start, you know, drawing up maybe 
a, um, a little bit of a tower mass. Um, I can get some direct feedback straight away and then I can start, you know, manipulating the actual form of this tower based on what I'm seeing here in my daylight analysis. So maybe I want less red on this facade and I can pull that face out like that. Um, and then I'm starting to kind of manipulate how much gain, how much solar gain we're getting on these geometries. Maybe I want, you know, to create like an adjacent tower that shadows off some of this top part here like that and this is all going to happen live because of that geometry pipeline component anything we model on the massing layer is coming through into that component live which is a really great workflow when using ladybug now that you have an understanding of how ladybug could be used in your design project you can take this a step further with a couple of other tutorials we have on offer at the differentdesign.com you can use Ladybug to run incident radiation simulations, which gives us an approximation of the energy that can be collected from solar thermal systems. This is a great tutorial to understand where to put energy collection systems in your design project. We can then take this logic a step further and apply an incident radiation analysis to a parametric facade tower in Grasshopper, where the openings in the facade shrink when they are exposed to too much radiation and grow when they are exposed to less, thereby increasing the thermal comfort levels inside the tower. This gives you a parametric model that responds to different radiation periods at any point in the year. You can access these tutorials and Grasshopper files by signing up as a premium member at thedifferentdesign.com today.